Welcome back to Streamline Entertainment, people. We're going to uh, go back into the Liam Payne. And <clears throat> I was listening to someone on TikTok, and this guy uh, went on to say, um, Liam Payne, did he have someone with him the day he died in uh, Argentina, uh, Buenos Aires? Let's get straight into the um, video. I do think... Um, that sometimes um, there's more to this case than meets the eye. Let's get straight into it. This video has very disturbing details. A second warning. This video also shares the sad final hours of Liam Payne and it could upset a lot of fans. It doesn't necessarily paint him in a favorable light. It does reveal how sad and in what a bad shape he was in. I totally agree. And a lot of it um, was to do with mental health um, as well sometimes. And things can spiral out of control from there. Um, I did a video on it by True Geordie, who was sort of blaming his ex. I do think she had a lot to do with his demise, but um, I also think um, his state of mind wasn't great and that didn't help towards the factor of him dying. So don't you complain in the comments section, okay? I'm making the video. It's my choice I there is no difference in covering a celebrity versus covering a politician or another big story the media is talking to people that were there at the hotel one woman has come forward who says that she saw Liam minutes before he passed and recounts in detail all of their exchanges. So this is not rumor or speculation. This is a woman's account of what happened. Rebecca says, one of my friends was due to get his suite. So the hotel staff were a little on edge because he still hadn't checked out at 4.30 p.m., but also because of his behavior. Rebecca and several friends of hers were checking into the Casa Sur Palermo Hotel in Buenos Aires for a wedding. <sighs> let, me, let me lift the curtain. I can tell I can tell what happened with this interview, okay? Yes, this woman says these things happened, but the questions that the British media asks, this is an interview that Rebecca gave to the Daily Mail, the questions are leading. You know, was he desperate? Was he this? You know, they will get, they will get the answer going in the direction they want based on how they ask the question. Does that make sense? Rebecca says, I came into the hotel and he was waiting by the elevator and it was so clear he wanted someone to recognize him. There was something a bit desperate about him. I was with my friends and we didn't know who he was, but none of us were that bothered. When the lift came, he suddenly said to us without any prompting, yes, I'm Liam, really drawing it out, and then said, all right, come on, you lot, get in the elevator with me. I love a cuddle. That, that, that is keeping in line with things we've heard before. Sounds like a, um, a cry for help to me that he just wanted someone to say, are you okay? Do you want to talk about something? Because sometimes we look at famous people 
um, as untouchable. They never have problems because they've got all the money and the help in the world. Um, they can see any doctor or any shrink, um, should I say, at any time in their lives. But um, he must have had heap loads of problems and mental health, um, which is really, really, really sad because he was so young. Um, he's got a kid um, from an ex. And it is worrying trait of um, young people um, dying over the last, you know, 10, 20 years. And also, the authorities in Buenos Aires did reveal that two women were in his hotel room in the hours leading up to his death. Rebecca, however, says, I decided against it and waited for the next one, elevator, but some of the other girls got in with him and halfway up, he started saying, oh, you're Americans? I live in West Palm Beach. I know Americans. You guys are effing crazy. You guys are effing dangerous. And then things got... <sighs> Rebecca claims that Liam grabs a girl who I think was with him and starts fake choking her. Only lightly, but the others thought it was really disturbing. Obviously, the friends of hers that got in that elevator recounted that to Rebecca. Rebecca said she returned to the lobby 10 minutes later. Liam also came back down shortly afterwards, sat on a couch and began to read emails. However, he read one message and then freaked out, she says. That's when he began smashing his laptop, as other reports have mentioned. I'm just wondering whether that message, possibly from his ex, say something, saying something about him really, really sent him over the edge. Um, it sounds like to me that um, something, sometimes a trigger inside you, inside of you just goes off where you just cannot take any more pressure in life and you're not thinking sensibly um, because like I said of um, mental health stress um, as well anger frustration sadness a lot of these feelings um, really come into this um, which is just horrendous again it's just shocking <clears throat> that he had so much of his life left and to look forward to Multiple people in the lobby witnessed this. Rebecca shares, quote, I have a blind relative and I realized he had the laptop on its accessibility setting for some reason, so that each time he moved the mouse hovering over something, the machine spoke out loud to say where the cursor was. I assumed he was doing that for the attention too, then he opened his emails and saw one which obviously upset him. Suddenly, he took the computer, shouted, F this, shh, mate, and started bashing the computer on the ground. According to Rebecca, this shocked everybody in the lobby, especially the staff. Then she says that instead of you know, avoiding him, she went to check on him. And she says, I went over, asked, are you okay? But he just kind of grunted. Then he said, I used to be in a boy band. That's why I'm so effed up. Rebecca adds, quote, there was a lot more swearing and he took the laptop and went to get back in the lift. After he'd <laughs> gone, this is especially telling, the guy from his entourage, who I think was called Roger, came over and apologized on his behalf, saying, I'm sorry, he just gets so high sometimes. I did wonder what these people with him were doing to help him, but maybe they had tried and failed. Who is this Roger? Why is this the first time I'm hearing about anyone that Liam was with? Is Roger a bodyguard, a manager, a publicist? Sometimes a lot of these things come out a bit later um, I'm sure the police tell them not to say anything to anyone until this investigation is over. Then what you find if there's an investigation 
um, and it and, and it's done, and it's um, basically he had an accident. People actually come out and talk, but I think that the people out with him have not have obviously been interviewed by police and told not to say anything until this investigation's over. This is the thoughts I get from these cases. Yeah, it is sometimes strange, but I think it's um, sometimes what the police do throughout the world, different states. It's just a friend. Who is this person? Have the authorities spoken to him? Is he the one that decided to take Liam to the hotel room and not the hospital? And this Rebecca is really shady, okay? She took pictures of him in the lobby. She says the hotel staff were freaking out and watching him nervously. The staff came to help him and get him back in the elevator. And that's when I took the last photo. You can see the arm of the English guy who was with him holding the lift door open before taking them up to the third floor again. It wouldn't surprise me if Rebecca was also the person who took photos of Liam's body and, and shared it on social media. Awful, 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 awful. And I am sure... I do think sometimes people, especially when it's someone's, someone famous and they were there, they tend to get off on the magnitude of an artist going through um, sometimes so much pain. And it's also a lot of attention for this Rebecca because she was the last one to see him alive as well. Um, it's sad sometimes the way we think maybe she was trying to help him but obviously the way this guy is putting it is that she just basically wanted the world attention on her which is kind of sad whereas liam payne had a lot of problems and should have been taken to the hospital for checkups that his loved ones did try to get him help and he did get help in the past he did he talked about that publicly Unfortunately, addiction, depression, mental health. We've seen this happen many times with famous and non-famous people alike. Great coverage um, that was. And to be honest with you, we have got to, if someone says that they're not feeling well and they've got mental health problems, all we can do is listen to them and get them the best help. You know, don't tear them down. Um, don't send them over the edge because it's too easy to do. We live in a world now where a lot of people suffer from mental depression. I don't think there was um, anything uh, dodgy about this case. Um, I believe he did commit suicide because he wanted to do that because... One, he didn't get the help, and two, he couldn't actually deal with what he was going through at that time. And yes, one of his friends um, should have taken him um, to the hospital, you know, and because I think he'll still be alive. Let me know what you think, people. Um, like I said, I don't think there was anything suspicious. I do th think people who were last to see someone alive get off on it um, because they're the centre of attention, like this Rebecca or some of the staff but it's life and but like i said my condolences go out to liam's family and the rest of the bandmates don't forget to subscribe to streamline entertainment and follow the channel thank you